Hello, arty peoples, and welcome to another episode of Jerry's Live. My name is Emmy Klein, and I am your host this evening. And as you can see, I have a guest on the show with me. Hey, this is, <laughs> this is uh, Andrew Cook, the education manager. I had, I had it written down. Education manager for McPherson. So thank you for being on the show with us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, uh, Andrew has an amazing show planned for us tonight, all about the Sennelier uh, abstract paints. Absolutely. Really, the whole abstract line. Uh, and then, if you guys are interested in everything that Andrew is going to be showing us tonight, make sure to go to the website, jerrysartorama.com, and type in today's class code, which is JL270. So, JL270, if you type that in the search bar, the teacher's cart should come up and show you everything that we're going to be playing with tonight. And uh, just a quick side note for everybody out there watching, this is our last show of the season. Yay! So we always have Andrew on, I think, as the last show. So I hope that is, continues. I can't yes, wait. It's, it's, it's going to be the best show ever. It is. So and you can rewatch it over and over until the next one comes out. Exactly. Up. Every time. Uh, but we do have a little bit of a hidden surprise for you guys as well. We do. But so I'll today I... Whoops. Today, I have brought in uh, Quentin, he's going to have to pronounce his last name for us, from Sennelier. He is the export manager. Hello. And we brought a true, a true Frenchman to come in and answer some of the questions we have about the Sennelier line, about the abstract line. Uh, so as, as Emmy and Quentin get talking, I'm mm -hmm. going to start playing and swatching out a few things we're going to want to look at later. So you won't hear from me for a few minutes unless I want to interject. But, Which uh, is okay. But we do have a couple prepared questions. But of course, if you do have your own questions, pop them in the chats. And our amazing moderators, Amanda and Frida, will ask your questions live and we'll be able to answer them. So uh, if you guys want to, go ahead and start swatching. And then I will start with the first question. But I am slightly blind, so I'm going to pull it over here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how long has Sennelier been producing artists' paint? Since a very, very long time. The history of Sennelier begins in Paris in 1887, uh, uh, so oh, wow. such a long time ago, uh, with Mr. Gustave Sennelier. Um, and it's we initially a scientist who became an artisan colorist and he developed, a, I mean, a, a large assortment of color for oil, acrylic, oil pastels, soft pastels. Uh, for the very well-known artists of this time. Uh, and year after year, Sennelier continued to develop, I mean, some unique tools for artists, uh, as for example, in 1949, we developed uh, the oil pastel uh, on the request of Pablo Picasso, for example. So we do have some good references, yeah. I mean, in the fine I mean, Picasso, that guy, you know? So yeah, <laughs> it started in Paris a long time ago. Mm -hmm. All right, so... The next question is, when did abstract acrylic come about? Because acrylics haven't been around for actually a very long time. Correct. So. Uh, correct. And uh, this innovative uh, acrylic abstract uh, is born in 2015, uh, so not too long a time ago, uh, finally. And we were, um, I mean, considering the artist quality line, we decide and not forget to innovate at Sennelier, in the, especially in the acrylic universe so that's why we developed um, the the extra abstract 120 milliliter and considering the success of this line in 2019 we extend the concept to the inks the liner and the mm -hmm. matte range so because I'm sure that Amy and Andrew will give you more <laughs> information and you're gonna see all the the future of this line in in, in a few minutes Oh yes, we are definitely going to be making a big art mess with all of this. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm also very, I just want to say, packaging wise, I yeah, I just love the pouches. They're so fun. It's so easy to like squeeze out your paints. Uh, but the next question is, why did Sennelier uh, choose to put it in a pouch? Which I did not know that was the next question. Uh, that's a good <laughs> transition, Amy. I mean, I mean the, 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 the it's story. It's like a professional. <laughs> The story of the of the pouch is quite funny because our artist director I've seen his children just eating a kind of fruits compote. I mean, in 20, 2015 and say, oh, nice! It's quite an innovative thing. Oh. Why should we remain a kind of classic aluminium tube? Once we need to innovate, and then he is um, now a real innovator on the market. So we decided to launch mm -hmm. this new packaging, and we're gonna we're gonna see all the future of it with Andrew in uh, in a few minutes. But it's come from this. 
um, and we developed the whole 60 color of abstract uh, in this pouch uh, um, in, in I mean in, in 2015 yeah uh, which I honestly when I did see this I thought kids food mm. because you know if, if you have a child and you see those little like applesauce things and they just you un unscrew it and you hand it to your kid and usually it doesn't end up as a mess but um, sometimes it does yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, that is that is funny. I didn't realize that that was actually kind of inspired by children's food. Yeah, and Which finally, w following this reflection, we have seen many features of this pouch. Uh, I mean, it's very pleasant uh, handling. Uh, mm -hmm. You can easily travel with. I mean, you can put it in your bag and it's yeah. really handy. As you can see, you can even walk on it. So it's very, very strong packaging uh, as well. Uh, regarding the pouch, it's allowing the paint to be well preserved because mm -hmm. there is no hair coming inside. And that's yeah. also a part of the very, I mean, the innovation. I mean, we do not have a tube like when we press the hair gum, come in again. Here, it's, there is no hair coming inside, so the paint, the quality of the paint remains the same from the beginning to the end. Yeah. And, and there is as well no waste. There is no waste oh, because yeah. you can use everything. So mm -hmm. once there is a tube, you cannot see what's remaining inside. So here, you can easily see what there is inside. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I might, one of my favorite things is the fact that this is clear. Yep. Yep. This is the actual color of the paint because this is just a clear little window, so you can see the paint mm. inside as well as on the bottom and on the back, and it's it's very transparent as far mm. as what you're getting. And yeah, no, I do like the idea that you can squeeze it out and not have air go back in as far as like something that would destroy your paints from inside the tube. Yep. That's, nobody wants to buy paint and have it not last. Yep. You know? All right, so the next question is, uh, why is it called abstract? Why it's called abstract? Good question. I mean, finally, it's, some people say, oh, it's just to realize some abstract artwork, but finally, definitely not. We want to keep the historical, I mean, um, DNA of Sennelier uh, and relative to the, all the, uh, the abstract movement uh, in the artist previously and keep uh, the innovative concept of abstract. And we think that abstract is quite a good name uh, to represent the everybody. Uh, soft body and liquid acrylic ink. Um, so you acrylic don't section. have to paint abstractly to use these. No. Okay. <laughs> it's, I mean, I, it's funny. I we Andrew and I were talking about that. We we get that question sometimes. That yeah. somebody's like, but I do I have to paint abstract? No. Not at don't. all. You yeah. can play and you can let your mm -hmm. all your Heidi going through uh, with this abstract line. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next question is, where is it manufactured? Of course, in France. <laughs> now it's it's. I mean, most of our color, mainly, I mean, 90, 99% of other color, it's made in France, especially in Brittany. Uh, mm -hmm. If some of you have already visited France, it's uh, up northwest, and uh, and we do have the facility over there to produce all our color. We do have. Um, we remain a family business, but we we are quite proud to still produce everything in France. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, which uh, was not where I was for the viewers that knew that I was out in France uh, for my residency, but uh, I might have to just go back to tour the facility. So we're going to have to make that happen. Yes. Uh, pop that in the comments if you guys want to see a tour of the facility. Yeah, of yeah. course. We can organize a live in, in the factory. I love it. Yes. All right. So the next question is, uh, does it use the same pigments that we would find in other Sennelier products? Which is huge. I mean, yeah, the, we do have thousands, thousands of references of pigment. Um, but what is very interesting with this concept, we are using the same pigment, the same color chart for the matte range, the classic heavy body 120 milliliter, and the ink. So it's allowing the artist to play with the same pigment but on different texture. So heavy body, soft body, and liquid. Now that's mm -hmm. very important. For example, in the premium range of acrylic sennelier, we are not using the same, exactly the same pigment because it's a bit more premium. Um, but if you try those, and that's what we're gonna see with Emmy and Andrew, the pigment mm -hmm. concentration remains very strong, and we are using the same process to produce the acrylic abstract than the artist quality range. So we can guarantee the quality of the color from uh, the pigment and also from the process. Now, this is not on your questions. Uh, well, at least I don't think it is, but uh, does this number right here and the name of the, the color transfer from like ink to the paints to the pens to everything? Yes. 
So if you find a color that you absolutely love and it's, you know, number 640, uh, you can easily find it in the inks as well. And yeah, there's uh, the numbers are also on the model, which is great. In fact, even beyond that, if you were to fall in love with, say, this Chinese orange, which is one of our most popular colors, uh, number 645, and you're an oil painter or you want to use it in the oil pastels, it's going to be that exact same number in all of the ranges, including the artist's oil paints, that is the artist amazing. acrylics, the artist's watercolor. So 645 will translate to Chinese orange no matter where you are. Uh, just like 314 is going to be French ultramarine no matter what range you're looking at. Can you list off all the, the numbers not, and the codes? Not all of them, but a few, a few. It's like we can have a test. <laughs> Awesome. All right. Well, that's that's very amazing because, I mean, I know for me, I work in all media. So if I'm trying to jump from one media to another and have it be consistent, I'm going to be looking for those numbers. And that's for me to not have to guess that it's the same. It's kind of important. We are trying to make things easy. I like it. <laughs> all right. So what is in the range? So the range, this is where I'll jump in. Thank you, Quentin. I appreciate you hanging out. Pleasure. Uh, and we will, well, if you want to hang out up here, you can, or sit down, and we'll pull you back up. But we uh, are going to make art. We are so going to make art. If you stand up here, we're going to make you make art. Promise I will not make any. What? Come on. It's just a part of You are welcome. I'm going to have a look like. from here. Okay. All right. So uh, within the range of abstract, and this we can switch to the table tabletop view. Uh, as we play with a few things. So within the abstract range, we have the heavy body pouches, which are these, these ones that we are holding up, taking a look at. Uh, and they are 120 milliliters, which is four ounces of paint. There's 60 colors in that range. Uh, we have the abstract matte, which is a soft body paint. So it's, it's not quite fluid, but it's not heavy bodied. It's soft body. Mm -hmm. It's matte. It's uh, mostly an opaque range. And then we have the abstract ink, which comes in 43 colors and a medium. And it is transparent. It's a very fluid acrylic. Uh, so it is, is designed to have translucency and vividness, give you some watercolor effects if you want. Mm -hmm. And you can use it with uh, your empty pump markers or an airbrush mm -hmm. or a dip pen. That's uh, And then we've... I'm going to borrow this one because it's nice <laughs> and bright. Uh, then we've also got... The abstract acrylic liners, which are... Uh, I like to hold them up to the camera so that everyone can read them. Which are a heavy body paint. They're actually the same paints that are in the pouches. Oh, uh, that's, that's good to know. So you can actually refill those out of the pouches if you wanted to. And it's an easy squeeze it pouch, is. so you can... That's easy. And to refill them, it's actually incredibly easy. You just pop, pop the top. Pop the top. And the Love fun it. don't stop. <laughs> uh, and I mean, I would imagine also if I were to run out of this color and I had this color and I just refilled it with here, like I didn't have to put the crazy fluorescent pink Correct. back into this. I can reuse these for any of the colors. Yeah, you can mix your own colors Ooh. once you're empty on there. Look at uh, that customization. So I like it. Lots and lots of fun. <laughs> so that is the range. There's a heavy body, a soft body, and a fluid, which is the, the ink. Uh, so with that, we'll kind of play with it because we want to to showcase some, some really exciting new stuff. One, I started swatching it out here a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a little small, so I'm gonna hold it up. Yeah. But this is 14 relatively new colors within the abstract acrylic heavy bodied range. And you guys know I love this one. <laughs> that Instant one, love, we love teal. Yes. <laughs> The, so the, There's a lot of teal around here. So the cobalt green has that, oh. that teal look, and then that Chinese blue has that kind of turquoise That's, look. I, I'm probably going to mix them together, so, not going to lie. Please, let's, let's play. Uh, and one of the things I'm going to start doing, just Love because it. we talked about it a little, is I'm going to take an empty pump marker that okay. I brought, and I am going to fill it with this Chinese orange ink, because I like Chinese orange, if you guys can't tell. I love that color as well. I am definitely someone who uh, kind of starts off with like burnt sienna, and that is what that reminds me of quite a lot. Uh, it's subtly different, but it is, it's got that nice like kind of burnt orange kind of color. It is. is it's great. like a burnt sienna that can make a green. I love it. A burnt sienna that can make a green. Yeah. So Chinese Please orange. explain that. So Chinese orange, one of the reasons that it's a really popular color within the watercolor range, within the oil range. Yeah, water as well. Uh, 
has to do with the fact that it's such a good mixing color. So we don't always think of it as a mixing color because it looks like a brown. Pump this marker for a minute and we'll actually mix a little bit. Oh my gosh, look at how pigmented this is. This is insane. So just a little bit of the paint um, and this is the, the abstract heavy body. So if I wanted to keep the, the texture and you know the, the brush marks and use like a palette knife and get really good texture, it will retain that and not really contract down when it dries. Yes. Right? Yep. But then I can also use a little bit of water, especially because we are using uh, the Fabriano uh, watercolor paper, uh, the blocks. So this is a very absorbent surface. So with acrylics, uh, that will grab onto your pigments. So you can add a ton of water and you really get kind of almost like a watercolor effect, which is really great. And it being so pigmented, mm -hmm. it goes a very long way. <laughs> It does, because it's got so many Never pigment stuck. solids in it too, it has relatively minimal shrinkage. So if you leave it in its, in its thick form, mm -hmm. it'll keep that texture and keep those peaks. Yeah. Up. So that's, that's for me uh, really, really good to know because if I'm trying to get a texture and I leave, ooh, that's fun. If I leave a bunch of texture and then as it dries, it starts contracting in, that's what drives me nuts because I'm looking to keep those textures, but then, you know, to, to know and understand what your, your materials are going to do is absolutely fantastic. That is super fun. So you're just using an empty marker. Yep, an empty uh, paint with marker. With the same, the ink, without it, no dilution, no water added to it, although Straight. I guess you could. You, you could, wanted a thinner. You, you could absolutely dilute it. You can mix them together to make your own colors. Uh, so I'm just kind of scribbling in on the background here just to show that it goes through this marker for one, mm -hmm. but also I'm going to use it as a background for just kind of an abstract landscape I'm going to work on uh, to show some of the properties of all the paints. Yeah. And one of the first things I want to try, because we talked a little bit about it, I'm mix these together I is just can't myself. that green. So with this Chinese blue and Chinese orange. Okay, we're gonna see this what, I wanna see. We're gonna see what color comes out. I haven't actually, full disclosure, I haven't actually <laughs> mixed these two colors Ooh, before. Oh, you guys are seeing an experiment, I love so, it. Now, do gonna, we have a question? Can you guys talk about the difference between heavy body and soft body acrylics? 100%. We can even show it. I like it. Uh, so We that, are visual people. We are. We are, but that is a fun color right there. That seems like a very desaturated kind of muted green. It is. And then if we give it something like a phthalo or a turquoise, mm -hmm. it would pick up in chroma and be more saturated. I like it. But it's very popular. So the Chinese orange is very popular as like a grade green for landscapes, for plein air painters. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, do we have another question? We do. Um, I had somebody in the YouTube chat asking if there's any specific additive to add to the abstract paint to make it, I guess, thinner and more fluid for painting with. Now, are you talking about adding to the abstract heavy body? Yes. Because we it, this comes in the fluid, which is already ready to rock and roll. So he was you, asking about using the heavy body specifically. Yeah. So I would guess that you already probably have this and you're trying to figure out how to make it work differently. Absolutely. So we we make a couple of mediums that also come in pouches, but it is compatible with any acrylic medium that you would be using, whether you want to use a glazing medium or a matte medium, gel medium, modeling paste, you can mix all of it. You can even, like here, I haven't gotten to the question about the about the abstract matte, the soft body yet, mm -hmm. but Which we're not we're not forgetting. We will get back to that. <laughs> but you can see even with the inks that I can take it and mix it with the heavy body. So that'll be a way to reduce the viscosity. You can mix all of these together to change the consistency. Oh yeah, they, they definitely mix all together. So like the ink is still an acrylic paint. Yep. It's just very fluid. But to get this nice and fluid like the consistency, just mix in a medium that's gonna work and thin it down, but not specifically water especially if you're working on canvas. Because if you are working on canvas uh, and you mix water into your acrylic paints, you're kind of weakening that, that acrylic bond. Yep. Um, so to have it uh, on a really absorbent surface like the paper works okay. But when you're on canvas and it doesn't have that absorbency to really grab onto your pigments, 
that's where you're going to have adhesion issues and you might have like your colors lift later on or flake off. Uh, so that's where using mediums are, in my opinion, so much better because you get the consistency with none of the adhesion problems. Absolutely. And within the abstract ink range, because a lot of us will say, well, the ink we want to dilute, we want it to be washed out, we want to create watercolor mm -hmm. effects. Within the ink range, we do create a clear acrylic ink medium in the abstract mm -hmm. range. Perfect. So that can be added in place of water, keep the binder level very high, but still make it transparent so that you can get those same effects without yeah. adding water to it. Uh, All right, now I'm going to actually, real quick, pull up another pad of paper. Because <laughs> I wanted to show you guys that difference between, yeah, those two. Uh, but you are already... No, no, you go, go I was, for it. I was going to give you a nice clean surface. No, no please, please. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to actually go with this uh, primary red, which I love. And so you have the matte, which is um, the soft body up here. And then you have the heavy body. What is that beautiful color? Light olive Light green? Light olive green. It's a very chartreuse color. It is. That is lovely. Reminds me a little bit of like slime, mm -hmm. which I'm not mad about. It's like a, the color of, and I learned how to pronounce this word correctly recently, so I'm okay. very excited. Okay. But it is like the color of pepperoncini. Pepperoncini. That's how you pronounce it? I didn't realize there was an O-N in there, oh, but there is. I guess, yeah. I always said pepperoncini. Yeah, pepperoncini. But it's a pepperoncini. I was thinking banana peppers, so yeah. yes, very, very exact. <laughs> banana peppers. It is. It very and, much is. And if I'm wrong, please note that in the comments for me, and I will correct <laughs> yes. myself. Yes, definitely. I, I don't know a lot about foods, so. Mm -hmm. Quick question. That beautiful big fat marker you were using earlier to put, I believe it was the Chinese orange down. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is that one of the liners with the separate tips put on it? It's not. Or That's... Uh, so that is an empty acrylic marker or an empty pump marker. Mm -hmm. uh, I picked it up at the Jerry's store today, uh, and that one just, just happens to be Montana. A Montana, uh, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Thank so this you. is just just the Montana brand. Um, they come in a lot of different sizes. Uh, we have, I think, several different empty marker options for you guys as well. Yeah. But if you don't want to nib that big, it comes in different sizes. Now, I'm going to actually grab this uh you know what i realized i don't have is yes paper towels forgot about that i used to have uh our easy wipers uh over here but we had moved them off so we're gonna have paper towels which is crazy for me i always use an easy wiper I like to minimize my uh my footprint but pepper paper towels do really well so i'm gonna get the paint off of this and i did want to show you guys real quick a uh, little up close kind of thing here. Um, this right here is a soft body, so you can see it's you know moving around and has a nice consistency. It's not super thin, but it definitely has a good body to the paint. Uh, but as this dries, correct me if I'm wrong, it's going to kind of contract a bit. It will. Yes. It will shrink a little right. more than the heavy body. Will. All right. Now I'm gonna clean off that palette knife so you guys can really get a nice clean uh, movement to the heavy body. So this. Orange right here, which is, I believe, red orange. That is a lovely color. Uh, that is the heavy body. So this has a little bit more stiffness to it. It doesn't have that same kind of flow, but as you can see, it definitely retains the peaks a lot better. So you guys can really see that texture that you're gonna get. And so that's not going to contract. It'll contract just, just a little bit. bit, but you'll still have those spikes, those peaks. Uh, they're not gonna soften out. Like so it. this one, the brush stroke will be a little reduced. Even if you're using a brush, it'll kind of soften itself out. Yeah. And it's also a much more matte paint because mm -hmm. our, our abstract matte is the soft body. So it's got a more okay. matte effect where the heavy body is a more satin effect. Okay. I mean, that would make sense because it, it is called matte. That'd be funny if it wasn't. It's a very glossy paint. Yes. Just kidding. All right. So I want, want to ask you one thing because I know this is on the table and we have not gotten to it yet. Oh my goodness, we have not. No, we have not. How embarrassing. And I've been itching to get to these. So which color so. do you want to do you want to play with? We can show them off. So these are That's a good question. the abstract not used. Oh, where's, Ooh, let's where's use the, the camera? Abstract okay. tips. Sorry about my hands everybody. Uh, oh, good call. Good call. <laughs> uh, abstract tips and there's eight different tips in that pack. You can't really see it here, but we're going to play with it a bit. And you can see the image here. 
that there's eight different effects that you get with that. How fun. Uh, everything from three lines to big flat lines to little tiny lines. So you can almost use it like a like a frosting pipette, you know? You can. I literally uh, have a pipette that I use sometimes for paint. So yeah. this makes it so much easier. Uh, and it snaps what? right onto the pouches. I was gonna ask, it, it just screws right on? It does. Oh. And it'll work with the heavy body pouches, either these or if you have the big pouches, the 500 mil, it'll work on those. It'll even work on the mat, though it doesn't, because of the body, it'll soften out a little mm -hmm. bit. Whereas with the heavy body, it'll keep that texture for you. That is super fun. So I'm going to just go ahead and go through all of them because I want to see each and every tip. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have a big flat, it's the technical term, doohickey? Doohickey, yep. Doohickey. Tips. Right, and I'm going to use the indigo blue, which I also would imagine if you were to uh, have like multiple colors, oh, there's the indigo. Color. Uh, if you have, I would assume, uh, several colors that you can pipe through this, you can probably get like a, a it, little bit of like a, a variation. It has a very interesting effect if you do that. Yes. Uh, because the outside, so it's like a tube of paint moving through the tip, right? Yeah. And as it does, it picks up the paint from the outside. Mm -hmm. So once you switch tips, which you can try, yes. as you do, It'll look like this color continuously for a little while, but if you scrape into it, the next color will be in the center of that. All right, hold, please. All right, so switch colors Did with you say it hold, still. I like yes, that. yes, hold, please. <laughs> my brain is like I'm catching up slowly, but I'm like I'm I'm very. Can you tell I'm getting excited? I'm getting bouncy. Um, so I'm going to let's go with. Uh, I gotta pull in the Katie color. Katie, no, I know Katie loves this. Like she's very into gray. Gray and teal. So, so this is for Katie. Warm gray. So I'm glad you brought that up. So with with all these 14 new colors in the in the heavy body pouches, uh, there's a reason we chose these as the 14 new colors. The the reason that Sennelier picked and chose these specifics was because of various trends that are happening, but also some of the historical colors that Sennelier has had a lot of popularity with. And in the case of this warm gray. Uh, it is not only a very happening color, if you will, but it's also one of our most popular oil paint colors. That makes a lot of sense. And it's, it's a really great color for all kinds of things. I would imagine landscapes, portraiture, Absolutely. animals. This would be a very great snout color. <laughs> but look at that transition. Oh, I don't even want to scrape into it. I just want to like... I know, but if you, if you were to, even up here, you can see that little, little dimple. There's a little bubble. You can... Scratch into that and the gray will be right in the middle of it. All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys choose whether or not I scrape into it. Do I keep it as... Okay, fine. They say yes. <laughs> I just... It's so what pretty. What kind of question is that for our viewers, Emmy? No. It's just so pretty. We can always right. make more. Ooh, actually, Christina, can I get a uh, FX FX palette knife? Because I think that's going to be amazing. Do you have a question? Two quick ones. Yes. Um, is there a color shift when these dry? And then also, how do you clean out those tips? There is, there is minimal color shift, but I, there is a little bit. It's an acrylic product, so the acrylic polymer itself has a little bit of a white effect on the wet paint. And then as mm -hmm. it dries, the color will get a little darker. So you'll have that, uh, but to a minimum degree. I, I haven't had it impact the way I work with the paint at all. Uh, and then as far as cleaning the tips, careful, point that down. I'm just trying <laughs> to make sure that I can see when it comes out. It's oh my goodness. I'm not gonna get acrylic, although you got acrylic paint all over you anyway. It's fine. I'm just waiting for it to splash at the camera. It might. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. Uh, so cleaning the tips. That one's a little bit trickier. Uh, so you can, you know, I, I keep some pipe cleaners around and pipe cleaners will clean through it really nicely. Uh, I've also saved a couple empty, empty jars, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's like a pudding jar or a baby food jar. Put a little soapy water in there and shake it up really good and then wipe Ooh, it out. That's solid. Tea pins are also really good yep. if you're a sewer or just happen to Now, have. while I'm still painting and I'm still going and I'm not going to be using, thank you, hon. Uh, I'm not going to be using these particular tips anymore. I'm going to actually just drop them into my water so that it doesn't dry in the tip. Because um, that would just, that I've had, like I said, I've used like a piping tip before uh, with my acrylics and my oils. Uh, now, I can tell you once the paint dries into those tips, it's like pulling teeth to get them back out. 
All right, so do we go number nine, which has this really lovely, fun texture? That looks scary. Do we go number seven? That still looks scary. Or do we, we go what frog Katie's <laughs> frog toes? <laughs> <laughs> this looks like a frog. Okay, fine. Frog foot it is. Now, do I just press it in? And I feel like You're I got a lot. You're ma'am. I love it. That is. And you can see right yep. there is where the gray started up. Yep. Absolutely. It pulls right through. That's super fun. And also just like, that's so fun. All right, yeah. FX, FX knives. Love these things. They have all con kinds of fun textures, which I will leave this over here now we, if you're feeling them. We talked a little bit about these, we but we haven't played with them yet. Yes, so. The, uh, these I'm are the 3D liners, correct? They are. I like it. And so these, yeah. they only the tips don't fit on them, so it's just this one style of tip. I know, I we'll, I know we'll get that question. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just a really fine line, but it's really great for just getting these drawn effects. Ooh, nice and thin as far as the uh, the application. I mean, I'm sure if you apply more pressure, you get a little bit more. But um, now. You said the um, the paint inside of this is the same paint as inside of the, the heavy body, so it's not going to have that contraction, and it's going to keep the, the texture, right? Exactly. Like so it, it does, it keeps it keeps that thick, thick quality, and you can even, let's see if I can, Quentin's not on the screen anymore, but he likes to talk about abstract being able to create a nice tower of paint. Ooh, and, the tower. Uh, and we can create... Towers of paint, even with Actually, even with the liners. I like it. Or with this, you can do two towers of paint. Two it's towers. A, it's a I'm trying to go down the line as far as like the the round ones. So I got my flat one, and these are the round ones that I've done so far. I'm trying to use a different color every time. Let's see if I I'm gonna knock oh, my tower. It's actually if you. I'm gonna knock ah, my tower go. over. Ooh, Let's it's see. gonna fall in my arm. <laughs> I'll catch it. It's hard. It's but hard to like tip it. Uh, if you actually leave it there, we might be able to do the side camera here. Oh. Yes, there you go. So you can see it keeps that nice body there. I like it. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna. Please. Can I, can I please on dive my in. Own artwork. I'm gonna also see how tall this goes. Ah. Now with a. <laughs> it's a pretty solid blob of paint. Like it. It actually really retains quite a lot of. With the wider, Height. with the wider base. That is a tower paint right there. This actually really reminds me of when I was uh, doing a the heavy body um, paint show, and I was piping it out with a piping tip, and I had a blob uh, that I it was named Blobby at the end of the show, uh, and I let Blobby dry, and I tried to pop it off the the canvas, and it was really. Quite a tall blob of paint, which was lovely. Blobby survived. It's actually somewhere over there. <laughs> well, I'm going to knock this one down. We'll mix some colors together. I like it. Now, this is a very satisfying tip. That would be fantastic for, like, if you want to do, like, more illustrative kind of um, artwork and kind of draw into the, the things. Ooh, that's a fun color combo. I made, I made a big mess. That's okay. Welcome to Jerry's. Now I'm going to have to try and recover. Messes. This is not how I paint. <laughs> but... It makes me happy. It is fine you're here. It makes me happy to play. Now, do we have any questions before I forget to ask all the, if we have any questions? <laughs> uh, we have one where she was wondering about layering between the different, like the heavy body and the soft body, and like if it would, if you didn't do it correctly, would it crack? Nope. Uh, so as long as you're using using the paints without water. Uh, then they're all going to have plenty of that acrylic binder in there. So even if I have this heavy body paint and I wanted to mix in some ink, I could even let that dry just like that. It'll, it'll start to dry like a fluid because it's yeah. a fluid. And it's definitely still more transparent. Yep. Or I can even get some different drippy effects. Ooh, that's fun. Let that dry yep. and it'll all stay. I like, and it's all acrylic, so acrylic polymer on top of acrylic. Acrylics want to stick to acrylics. So even if you were to do any of these onto, say, like a paper palette pad, you can peel them off 
and then stick them onto your artwork afterwards, which is really fun. You can stick them down with um, medium or even more acrylic paint, which is really fun. Trash yeah. bags also work really well if you want to do a resist. I like that. Polypropylene. Ooh. That is hard to control, but that is super fun. Holy uh, cow. It's giving you kind of a spider web or doll kind hair of, kind of effect. I like it. I like the dots that you're doing. I don't see people using them for that, but that's a really great yeah. way to utilize them. That's Whenever I do abstract kind of art, I end up popping in some dots, which are really fun. But, I mean, different mark making, you know? I'm sure they could also use, like, especially with the, the larger kind of round ones, you could probably do more of like a teardrop kind of a thing where you're, as you're lifting it, you're pulling it up, which would be really fun. All right, let's pop in a couple of these colors. Oh, this Chinese blue is so pretty. All right, and then I have, this is another flat one. So I'll actually put this up here with my other flat one. So with these inks, one of the things I really like is their versatility. The fact that I can pour them on like this and then move them around with a brush or have them in that dip pen or have them with or oh, that's fun. pump markers or put mm -hmm. them through an airbrush. I didn't bring an airbrush today. I should have, but next time. That would be fun. Next time we'll do a little mural on the wall or I something. I like it. Well, I mean, we need a, another mural going on, right? The question is, what do we paint? All right, so this is dark Naples yellow. And then this will be the last tip. This is a, kind of a square. Like this a little, is kind of fun. A little square. It's like a little square. Let's see. And I love how it actually, oops, got a little air pocket there. Um, I love how it actually uh, really does like sit right on top as you're squeezing out with these tips. It kind of reminds me of um, an artist that I just recently uh, saw that was using acrylic paints, I think with a more of a heavy body going through like almost like a 3D printer, which was really cool. So it it's, cool. it's moving around kind of like this, almost like ribbons of paint, but I want to show this. I love those textures. Those are the different tips you guys can get. So we have the, the, the dark blue is the wider flat. This uh, lighter blue is the uh, slightly smaller flat. And then we have the square, which is my dark Naples yellow. And then we have our round, which is, I have the orange. This is the Venetian pink, which I love. That's a really great color. And I honestly think that's the Chinese orange that I used down here. Looks like. And then um, we have the green and then this caput mortem. Now the green, what is that color? That is quite lovely. A sap green. That is a solid green. Now, I love that. you mentioned the caput mortem. Mm -hmm. And I know that when I was here and we were playing with some watercolor, we kind of nerded out on why some colors are named the way that they mm -hmm. are. And so I just want to mention caput mortem again because that's such a fun story. So caput mortem, which kind of means death, right? Yep. Uh, is designed after the color mummy, which was actually made from mummies. Like little mummy parts ground up because when the body was embalmed, it would oxidize in, in a certain way that created this, this kind of like people rust. Ew, uh, That's, it's people rust color. And, uh, <laughs> you should see the look on Amanda's face. It's like, no, nope, nope, nope. So we no longer use mummies. I, I hope that goes without saying. Uh, but we still use a synthetic iron oxide, which is a, basically a laboratory-made rust that, uh, that will create the same color that we would have had with, with real mummies. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a purpley iron oxide. As That's opposed so to something like a Venetian red mm -hmm. uh, that would be a, a, a red iron oxide. This has got more of that violet tone to it. Like hematite almost. I like it. I'm going to actually take the same color. I'm going to pop it over on this side of my paper. This was a terrible mixture. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> 
That's it's okay. It's no acrylic. Good. You can paint on top. I can. Once it dries, you can paint on top. Use an opaque color, and it is gone. This is not looking pleasant. I'll it's have to fix Burger that. King, and I can't. <laughs> I don't know why. Burger King. <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right, I'm going to actually use. I can fix it. A titanium I can fix white. it. That's what I need titanium white to cover it up. All right, now I'm going to mix them together. Ooh. There's that undertone that you're talking about, that real nice purpley yes. kind of color. Love that color. That is beautiful. Now I'm going to mix some soft and heavy body together to get a nice consistency here that will hopefully cover some of this stuff up. So if you mix a heavy body and a soft body together, does that make it a medium body? I, I would imagine so. I guess it depends on the ratio that I'm mixing. fluffy body. Fluffy. Soft and, I mean, what's the term? Is, uh, it, is it fluffy? I think, <laughs> I think it's leaning towards still being a soft body. Okay. But I might would it just be body? There you, you go. Cancel each other out. <laughs> there you go. Heavy and the soft equalize. Oh. I if, guess it's, it, if it's equalized, is it an antibody? Ooh. ooh. Mm. Oh. Terms. We're making making history, guys. This is how they're gonna be like. How did that come up? You know, how is that a whole new term thing? And they're gonna be like, you know, watch the show. YouTube you would like to know how does this mix with modeling paste? Great. Mm -hmm. Mixes. Fantastic with modeling paste. With something like the acrylic ink, you'll need more of the ink in order to tint the modeling paste and get some intensity. I think with we the, have some modeling paste over there if you guys want to grab it. With the we heavy body, <laughs> you can use very little and, and maintain the the body. So it mixes great with modeling paste, gels, so, mediums. I'm going to pop this off and get a new page. And I'm going to pop some modeling paste over here so you guys can see exactly just how well this will uh, mix. Thank you. All right. All right. Just grab whatever we got over there. There's some modeling paste. I'm going to squeeze out. I love this blush tint. It's kind of a rosy, a rosy yeah. white. I clearly need a larger palette knife, but that's okay. We'll make do. Oh, yeah, that's all right. I'm already there. Too late. All right. And then you said the ink, correct? Yeah, if you do the ink, you'll need a little bit more. You can get a good tint out of it with just a few drops. Yeah. But if you want a lot of intensity, you'll have to add more. The heavy body, you can add a little less and get the same kind of intensity. Let's do three drops on my puddle of modeling paste. But yeah, then that definitely mixes. And remember, I am mixing it on paper, so the um, the paper is absorbent. It's trying to soak that uh, ink up into the paper. So wherever it touches, like down here where it touches the page, without being mixed in, it's trying to absorb in. But once I mix it in, this would be better to be mixed on like a palette paper that's not absorbent and not going to soak in all of your... Or if you're using it on something that's already painted, then you won't yes. have to worry. Nice It'll create it. its own nice little coating. Yeah. Angela would like to know how this could be used as a tint for gesso. Angela, it would work perfectly. Same so exact just, way. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, gesso is just like modeling paste. It's just got a little bit less of the calcium carbonate in it uh, and a little more titanium white. So to get this same kind of tint result, you would need a few more drops of the color, mm -hmm. but you would get the same kind of impact. Now, I'm going to actually, I'm going to mix a little bit of this light olive green in as well. Just a touch, right? Just a touch. Just to see how that affects. I haven't used this warm gray at all today, and that's one of it's my favorite color. colors. Mm. Yep, so now this is a nice, funky kind of green color. Ooh, I like that color. It's kind of minty. A little bit. If I had a little bit more blue in there, I'd be teal. Every time. 
Every Leslie time it just Koenig complains. Leslie Koenig on YouTube says those Burger King colors could have been an underpainting, but now that happy accident looks like it's going to be a Gagoin in Tahiti. Oh. Mm -hmm. I like it. <laughs> it was it was perfect perfect go again. Uh, go again. Go again. That's close. And uh and I. I struggle with words, so <laughs> we all know my pronunciation is terrible. Dioxazine, say it with me. <laughs> Listen, I can't say words unless I hear them. It's dioxazine. When Gauguin's a name, not yes. all names are meant to be pronounced, right, Quentin? How do you pronounce your last name? Lebai. Lebai. Le okay, now how's it spelled? And it's spelled with an L. Yep. At the end. L. But it's a nice end to the day, like a lullaby, right? Lullaby, lullaby. Okay. That's that is like vibrating. Those two colors. Whoa! Woo. That is. Don't that look is at fun. that. It's, it's <laughs> even like it's even more it's, vibrant on camera. It's like it's picking up the texture of the modeling paste that's been tinted, and then that uh, that remember this uh, is the heavy body paint. So it sits right on top and gives it a nice texture as well. It's actually clearing from one point to the next yeah. without sinking in. It's got a nice, nice texture to it. That is great. These are so much fun. I'm being asked if this brand has an odor. I don't smell it, and I probably Frida, won't. Frida is the nose on the show. Frida will smell everything. And if she can't smell it, there's no odor. I can smell a little bit of that kind of acrylic scent. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, that's necessary in acrylic. You know, uh, it's, it's an acrylic it's, polymer. Well, it's, the, po what it's the additives in the polymer that prevent it from getting moldy, right? Mm -hmm. So if we don't smell that, then your paint has the potential. You, you might open it up one day if you have it in a jar. Say you're mm -hmm. saving some. You open it up and there might be a little, little stuff in there you don't want. So. Gross. So it smells kind of ammonia-like, mm -hmm. uh, and it, but it's not exactly ammonia from what I understand. It's an ammoniate, but it's it's ju just a little bit is in there, and it evaporates off really quickly. Mm -hmm. Not enough that it's I bugging can't. me to smell it right now. Yeah, and I I wouldn't. And you want have to do it that. like literally under your nose, and that's I'm I've been working with it here, and I don't smell it. Granted, my nose, I you know we all know that I can't smell much of anything. It doesn't bother me ever, but. Again, if Frida doesn't smell it, and you know, that's how I judge it. <laughs> the, the only other thing that I'll say I can smell from from the abstract line and from really any any paint line I've ever used is neon colors. Neon colors have a very unique scent. They do. Uh, really. I I don't I don't know what the dye is derived from to make something neon, but they they smell. They smell the. They smell like fluorescence. <laughs> <laughs> they smell like a side ponytail and spandex. Maui and Sun skateboards. There it is. <laughs> oh, I guess I went 80s, didn't I? That's okay. 80s, 90s. Yeah, it all, yeah, yeah. It all, you know, they come together at some they point. They do. All right, so how are we doing on time, by the way? Well, about 10 minutes left. Okay, oh, no. so. Uh, last minute questions, if you guys do have them, pop them in the chats, please. We are absolutely here for you. Did we have another question? We have a question about archivability. That's, I love that question. Archivability is a great question. So I will let you answer that one. So all of the abstract acrylic, the inks, the heavy body, the mat, uh, the liners, they are all artist quality. They all have artist grade pigments. It's an mm -hmm. artist quality polymer. They are totally archival and can be mixed with any other acrylic that you're utilizing. Uh, as far as light fastness, the full range, with the exception of the neon fluorescent colors, yep. the full range is light fast. Uh, so have no fear about that. You're going you're gonna to be able to trust that it'll last the test of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the just be cautious about fluorescence. Yeah, that's, that is no matter what brand you're in fluorescent paints are going to not be like that. So it's just the, the nature of the, the pigment. And they can really. still they can still be used and dye. last. I would recommend if you are using fluorescence in your paint, mm -hmm. uh, in your painting, then coat it with some kind of a UV varnish mm -hmm. and that will prevent the sun from fading that quite as quickly. Uh, also don't plan on doing a mural that's on a south facing wall with neons. It won't last very long. Yeah. But if it's in somebody's collection, if it's in their house, 
uh, as long as it's not directly in a window, then it'll, it'll last a good long time. So you don't have to worry about yes. that. Uh, but yes, all of them archival, suitable for any archival surface. Mm -hmm. You can paint on paper, you can paint on canvas. Yeah. Don't paint on oil primed surfaces. Because oils on, and acrylics do not yep. mix. Well, oils can go on top of acrylics, acrylics cannot go on top of oils. Yes. But you can paint it absolutely on any acrylic primed surface, canvas, mm -hmm. linen, paper, yeah. mixed media pads, watercolor pads, whatever you want to. Uh, if Wood. You're, Yep, wood, yep. wood panels. I've had people paint uh, sculptures and things like that with acrylics. They're yep. great. Uh, now, I do know somebody's going to ask because you did mention uh, sealing it with a UV kind of varnish. Uh, is there a specific varnish that you would suggest or kind there's, of? There's not. There's a number. Acrylics. Yeah, a number of brands out there mm -hmm. uh, that make UV varnishes. So just look for one that you you know and trust. Mm -hmm. uh, ask your your local art store or send us a message on on the yeah. chat here and we can help you out uh, but definitely most most uv protective acrylic varnishes are going to be suitable yes uh, and it comes in brush on or spray on and with the acrylics um because once they dry they are permanent so you won't have an issue of it reactivating once you go to apply like a brush on varnish which is really great we have an entire show on uh, varnishing you guys can always go check that out as well we do have a question. Do acrylics have flammability issues like oils do? They don't. No. They don't. No, so the flammability issue comes from solvents well, as well as the linseed yeah, oil. Exactly. Um, so the linseed oil, when it dries, uh, as it cures, it uh, it's a chemical reaction that's happening. So that produces heat, and that's where the this kind of flammability issue comes in. Acrylics don't dry like that. They dry through evaporation, like water just evaporating off of like your countertop or something. There's no no heat being produced. So, nice and easy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I feel like I stole your thunder. No, there, not, <laughs> not at all. Perfect, perfect answer. I could not have said it any better. Well, thank you. No. All right, but I think we are getting a little bit to the end of our time. Uh, we have one more, we have one more question. Would this line be considered professional quality? This, uh, we call it our, it's kind of our foundation artist line. Mm -hmm. So it is using artist pigments, artist polymer. You can use it for professional work. Sennelier does make an artist line of acrylic that is a step up and it has a wider range. More than, So this is 60 colors. That one has many more colors. Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely suitable for artist grade work. Artists use it. Large scale artists will love it because you're going to be able to cover large surfaces really rapidly. Very highly pigmented, which is definitely what you're looking for, which is great. Definitely. Sorry, and I got very distracted with the inks again. I, I think that's a finished painting. I love that. I'm, it's not quite finished. You got to tap the, the inks down. Oh, well, now you did it. It's no good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's perfect. Thank perfect. you. You can do no wrong with art. That's what I love. You can only you can only have fun. I mean, it can turn out like you know. You may not like Less what you I see do. first, but somebody might like it. You might be able to continue to work it. Mm -hmm. You can always cut it up and collage with it. Very true. So as long as you're having fun, it's going to create something. Even if that something is just the joy of making it. <laughs> Now I will say, uh, we do have a phrase that we say a lot, which is paint through the ugly. So every art usually has a uh, less than ideal stage and that is okay, because if you just keep painting, you're gonna get to something that you really, really love. Yes. And I got distracted and I'm now making a bigger art mess. I love this Venetian pink, it's such a good color. I really like that color too. And that one comes in, of course, the inks as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been playing with that quite a bit. It's a great marker color. Ooh, this one, oh, markers. That would be lovely. I can see you guys using, you two, with your calligraphy skills, using this Venetian pink uh, for your, like, springtime Ooh. calligraphy. Yep, yep. Which is fantastic, because then you can use all these different beautiful colors for calligraphy as well as, you know, paintings and things like that, which is amazing. I love the versatility of being able to use all the things. All the things. All the things. I want to keep making a big mess, but I'm just going to keep making a big mess. I like this. 
and I'm, I'm going to keep going. This is the problem. Keep painting, and eventually you make a bigger art mess. Well, if we don't keep painting, then we don't get through the mess. That's true. And you just taught me I have to work through the mess. That's right. <laughs> I'm I having, like it. I'm having too much fun. We can do this for hours. We could. Although, pretty sure uh, eventually people might have to go home. Nah. Just leave the equipment on. It's fine. <laughs> you guys will leave. We'll just be up here rambling the entire time. It'll be great. That would be fun. We'll just do a lock-in. Have everybody hang out for like a whole night. All right, guys. If you're interested, <laughs> my entire team will abandon me, I'm sure, at one point in time. <laughs> I just need to make sure the cameras are still going. But if you, want, yeah, if you guys want us to just be live for the entire night, just let me know. We really could do a mural if we do that. I could. That'd be a long night of painting, but that would be that would be so fun. It, it actually, I was just at some museums and there was a whole room of painting, uh, but the artist's name is escaping me all of a sudden. I'm that embarrassed. Is okay. so I'm the worst with names, so it's fine. All right, if I if I keep going, I'm just gonna keep making a bigger mess. I'm okay with that. That looks awesome. I think I think it's done. That is super fun. I like the like abstract landscape. Me too. I've been doing a lot of plain air on site, but as an abstract painter, I mean, usually I, I work a little bit tighter than this, mm -hmm. uh, but not much. And that pink. That is super fun. Working on site abstract is a lot of fun. It's kind of nerve wracking because people always walk up and expect to see you painting. A very realist painting, mm -hmm. but they see that you're not, and they try to say encouraging things. It's, oh, yeah, I've had that happen before, where they're like, "Huh, that's how something." Cool. Yeah. Are you painting? <laughs> I do love that question. Where it's like, "Oh my gosh, did you paint that?" And you're like, "It's great," but that is, I love that that fluorescent. Pink. That is so fun. And that is called fluorescent pink, it right? Is. Not, yes. Yes, that is indeed. Yeah. So that color comes in. Does that come in the ink? Everything, yes. Because oh, I've been obsessed with fluorescent colors lately. Yeah, the fluorescent, it comes in the inks and the heavy body and the liners. Mm -hmm. That is so fun. So I like how you can take the liner and then also kind of blend it back out while it's still wet. Me too. Lovely. I also very much appreciate how you have paint all over your hand. And I'm still relatively clean. Yep. We could fix that. That that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew is here, guys. <laughs> all right. So how are we doing on questions, though? I just want to make sure we are all set. Great. Uh, again, if you did have questions and uh, you want to make sure that you pop them in, even if you are watching in the future, Pop them in the chats, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. We always make sure to keep an eye. And <laughs> you're still painting. It's great. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we will always make sure to keep uh, an eye on the questions. And even if it's a question for Andrew, uh, if you don't see them, I'll make sure that they get over to him or even Quentin all the way over in France. So thank you guys so much for being on the show. Let's, gonna, let's pull Quentin gonna, on to say goodbye. On. Come on. Come on. You're all the way from let's France. Au revoir. Yes, for sure. So thank you guys so much for being on the show and all the knowledge and information that you guys have uh, brought and all of the amazing paints that we got to play with. Uh, this has been so much fun. Thank you so much for having us. We had a blast. Well, I had a blast. I can't speak for Quentin. <laughs> no, no. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Amy, Andrew, and all the team. Uh, mm -hmm. And let's play and practice art with abstract. Yes. Thank you. Definitely. Uh, so it is tradition, though that we dance off the show. So I hope you guys are ready. We're going that way. And of course, uh, this is the last show. So I will see you guys in <laughs> January. Thank you so much. We'll catch you next time. Bye.